You want answers? Just tell me the truth! Okay, I'll tell you. The answers to your questions are up next. G'day everyone and welcome to The Coin Couch. My name is Andrea. Well, the time has come to give you answers to your questions. I received a total of 23 questions, but since Matt Smallwood answered his own, thanks Matt, that leaves us with 22. Now I know I mentioned that I was going to include some of the leftover coins that I didn't have time to present in 2016, include them in this video, but I think it's already going to be too long, so let's leave them for next week. I should also let you know, Fun Cop insisted on helping me with some of the questions. And the secret giveaway drawing. So here they are, the Q's and A's in no particular order. Digger 57 asked, what's my favourite coin? Now, my favourite coin is an Australian coin, surprise, surprise. It is the Holy Dollar. For those of you that don't know about this coin, the middle was punched out of Spanish dollars, creating two parts. The donut-shaped one with the hole in it, that was known as the Holy Dollar. Obviously. And the piece that was dumped out of the middle, that was known as the dump. Surprise. Now, as an Australian, I really love the story surrounding this coin. The fact that it was an ex-forger who actually punched the holes in those Spanish dollars to make Australia's first currency, I think is pretty cool. I have done a whole video on this coin and I will list it in the description. The Emperor asked, how do I display my coins at home? She doesn't. Now, because we are renovating, things are a little bit all over the place at the moment. So here is a photo of my coins. They're actually in those two cardboard boxes just underneath my Millennium Falcon. Everything's safe though. I do in the future hope to buy one of these lovely cabinets I've had my eye on at IKEA. I'd also like to do something with all of the small chains that I've collected along my travels. Either put them onto a world map or perhaps have the world map up and then store some coins underneath so it's a bit of a talking point when we have people around for dinner. Salivate Metal asked, what's my favorite heavy metal band? Uh, Metallica? That's not heavy. Uh, next question. Jay Silver asked, do I like silver bars or just coins? Now, to be honest, originally I was just a coins girl, mainly because of legal tender status, but since being here on YouTube, seeing more bars, I have actually become a silver bar fan, especially people who hand pour their own bars. I think it's amazing. I love the ripple effect and all those little stamps that people put on their own. I think it's super cool. Pit Bullion asked, if I were a coin, which coin would I be? Uh, anything with the queen on it? Seriously? Okay, I think I would actually be the Australian 20 cent piece. It's not an overly snobby coin, it's just copper and nickel, but the design is timeless. So even though that people may find this coin a little bit annoying because it's always in their daily change, or take it for granted, if you really take the time to look at it and learn from it, you'll realise it's quite special. A real one and only. Oh, how sweet. Really? I was being sarcastic. Ah. Silver Stacking Insomniac asks, how did I come up with the name Coin Couch? As some of you know, I was inspired by Coin Week and Coin World to start my YouTube channel. I like the idea of presenting information about coins, except I wanted my channel to be a little bit more relaxed. So I was trying to think of words to do with coins. I was sitting on a couch at the time, and I put two and two together. Lucky you were not sitting in the bathroom. Silverspeed asked, what colour sofa am I going for? It's a couch, not a sofa. I think that's what he meant. Coin couch, not coin sofa. Next question. Mr. Zeke asked, what is my opinion of the recent silver Krugerrand apparent shipping problem? What could have possibly gone wrong shipped in tubes in monster boxes? Just a question for an insider. I think this has actually probably got to do with the fact that South African Mint has never shipped high volumes of these Krugerrands before. This is the first time they've done it in tubes and monster boxes. And to be honest, they're not really sure how it works. Now, I hear that all of the ones in the US had to be reclaimed, sent back but apparently all the ones that made it to Europe were fine, so. What is so hard about packing coins into tubes? Basically, it was something to do with the coin edges actually scraping together within those tubes, so maybe they weren't packed tight enough, maybe they just need to practice, who knows. Stock Jockey asked, how many tattoos do I have? And can I explain to the world what I was thinking when I got this tattoo on my wrist? This is actually a matching tattoo that I share with my now husband. We both got these tattoos in 2015 when we signed our papers in Germany to be able to get married. So we wanted to mark the occasion on a special thing and I think it's cool. It's actually the 18th of November 2015 written in Roman numerals and exactly one year later that's when we got married at the Royal Australian Mint. And the reason we got it on our wrist is so we could hide it under our watch band. Didn't work. Unprofessional Treasure asked, is he the best, most amazing, coolest, awesome, wonderful person I have ever spoken to? Well, UT, 
we've never officially spoken. Coin Hunter asked, what was my first silver coin? This is actually my first silver coin that I bought while working at the Royal Australian Mint in Canberra. It was the first year that I'd started working at the Mint and I was lucky enough to get it signed by the designer. There will be more information on this coin and the designer coming soon in my Aussie Stack Saturday series. The Viper MC139 asked, what was the first interesting coin I owned? The first coin that I found interesting was actually a one kina coin from Papua New Guinea. My family and I used to live in Papua New Guinea and when I saw this coin with a hole in it, I thought it was really awesome. Jack Stack and Silver Ho asked, Ronald McDonald Trump or Ronald McDonald for president? Someone needs to tell him the election is over. Coins and Currency asked, what is my favourite gold and silver coin and why and how long have I been into coins? So you already know the answer when it comes to my favourite silver coin, but my favourite gold coin is actually a rose gold coin. It's the Australian 2015 Kimberley Sunset 2 ounce high relief. I think this coin is so beautiful and captures a Kimberley Sunset so perfectly. The pink gold, the diamond, the design, it really is a work of art. Speaking of art, I probably should tell you my favourite yellow gold coin. It is the Kiss from Austria 2016, part of the Klimt and his Women series. Now this is my favourite work of art of all time, so of course this would be my favourite yellow gold coin. Now I've mentioned works of art twice now and that is the reason I started collecting. I love the idea that someone can design something on a piece such as a coin that can be spread throughout the entire population, everyone's seen them, you can carry a piece of art or a story around in your pocket and that's why I find coins interesting and I think they're super special. The first time that I realised just how special they were is when I visited the Royal Australian Mint in 1997. I made this coin at the Public Coin Press. I love the fact that this coin came in a little wallet so you were given the information and the story surrounding this coin. I also think it's great that Australia and other countries as well can celebrate great moments on their coins. This is also the answer to Walt2T's question, what was the first coin that started my collection? There you go. Wolfman Stack 16 asked, if a coin pouch could pouch coins, how many coins would a coin pouch pouch? Depends on the size of the coin pouch. Next question. Charlie Rock Rock asks, do I try to live a holistic lifestyle or subscribe to the drugs doctors prescribe? Now I'd like to be able to give you a good answer on this one, Charlie, but if I have a headache, I take a headache tablet. Silver Strike asked, in my opinion, what is the most horribly ugly coin design I've ever seen? Now I don't really want to be mean here. Sure you do. Okay, okay. It's the Newey 2016 Money Toad. I just look at this coin and see. <laughs> For me, it's just really disappointing because if you look at the rest of the series, it's absolutely gorgeous. But this design just looks like it's a rush design, slopped on a blank. And in my opinion, the best thing about this coin is the box. Yes, keep it in the box. Put the lid on, tie something around it, and don't open it again. Alex Mamet asked, how long does it take to make the coin of the mint? Now I'm actually going to do a whole video on this subject because there is a lot of detail to go into and it's really, really interesting. But just to give you a super quick answer, it takes about 8 seconds to make a proof coin and you can make about 250 circulating coins in one minute. Hidden Numismatist asks, can I teach him how to say some numismatic terms in German? Um, no, just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so Fun Cop's gonna say the English words and I'll say the words in German. Coin. Munze. Silver coin. Silver Munze. Mint. Prägestätte. Mintage. Auflage. Proof. Polyeta Platte. Uncirculated. Stempelglanz. Coin dealer. Munzhandler. Coin Keeper asks, how do I end up in Germany and did I learn to speak German in country or at home in college? You just heard her, she can't speak German. I can, it's just not very good. But to answer your question, I moved to Germany to be with my boyfriend and I actually did a little bit of German school here part-time for about six months. So I still need to practice, but it's given me a good start. This brings me to Silver Torch 66's question. How did my affiliation with EMK come about? So I heard of EMK while working at the Royal Australian Mint. It was a big distributor that the Royal Australian Mint did business with. My boyfriend actually worked at EMK, so when we first met, we did a bit of long distance stuff, then I came here to Germany to live, and eventually I started working for EMK. So that's how that one happened. Well done. And here it is, the last question before we get to the secret giveaway drawing. Santa Silva asked, what are my top favorite YouTube channels and why? Now, before I answer this question, I just want to let you know, if I'm subscribed to you, it means I like you and your content. Move it along now. No, it's true. I like you and your content. Just say the channels. 
Okay, okay. My top 10 favorite YouTube channels, not including Senator Silver, are Unprofessional Treasure. I was there for Unprofessional Treasure from the start. I feel like he's a really cool guy. I love that he's open about what he's doing and why, and he's very interesting to listen to and watch. Silver Saver, what a sweetie. She's so nice. She's a great contributor to the community and her videos are really fun. Callum Coyne, probably one of the smartest kids I've ever met. He's fun, very passionate about numismatics, and I love that he's always trying to improve his channel. Now, he has been gone for a little bit, but I think school's really important at the moment, but I'm sure he'll be back. Silvertorch66. Now, I haven't been subscribed to Silvertorch66 for as long as some of these other channels, but I have to admit, the first time I saw one of his videos, I was really impressed. It is absolute production perfection. He presents all of these pieces in a clear, relaxed, and informative way. Really nice to watch. Backyard Bullion. He also shows his pieces in a relaxed, interactive way, but I really have to say the thing that sticks out about his channel is his facts, and I love, 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 love In Focus Fridays. Golden Arms. Now, this has got to be some of the driest humor on YouTube, but it's so funny. I love his creative sets, his sarcasm in between showing his pieces, but at the end of the day, his appreciation for gold and silver is fantastic. Coin Keeper. Her friendliness towards the community is out of this world. She's a bit into everything, which is really cool to see, and you just gotta love that laugh. Silver Gold UK. Now, we started our channels around the same time last year. He's a Brit with a lovely sense of humor. I love his accents, the way he explains things. He started small, but he got bigger and bigger, but at the minute, he hasn't posted recently. So I'm kind of wondering where he went. Please come back, Silver Gold UK. My GPO. I've actually only got two words for my GPO. Sunny Manitoba. This guy is so fun when he makes his videos. He's always got such a positive outlook on everything. And I guarantee after watching one of his videos, we'll not only learn something, but you'll have a good time in the process. And last but not least, Silverfucks AG47. He actually produces both German and English videos. He has really nice presentation skills and always tries to give you a lot of information. I also enjoy watching the German videos too, to see how much I'm learning. A huge thanks to everyone who posted a question and a very special thank you to all of the people that watched all of part two of the Coin Couch in 2017. By telling me your favorite Coin Couch 2016 video, you earn the chance to win this PCGS graded one ounce silver coin. The video that came first for 2016 was, surprise, surprise, Married at the Mint. The video that came second was CC Down Under, Aussie Animals. And third was a tie between 2016 Lucas, the 2016 World's Fair of Money, and the people who said they couldn't pick a favorite. So thanks for this. Now I know that everyone wants to see weddings with Australian animals with bloopers. Fantastic. Great help. Okay, Fun Cop is now going to draw the winner of the PCGS PR70 Cam Australian Saltwater Crocodile Bindi. One ounce color coin. Now we had 36 entries for this giveaway. Very exciting, so you've got some good chances there. Fun Cop's on the way, and the winner is... Stock Jockey. Yay! Please send me a PM, give me your details, and I will have that coin shipped out to you as soon as possible. Fun Cop, would you like to say congratulations? No. Okay, well, that'll do it for today. I'll see you next Monday when we catch up on those two coins from 2016 we missed out on, and then we'll be ready to go with the new coins for 2017. Hope to see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to guarantee your seat on the coin couch.